Um, please allow me to tell you a little bit about our keynote speaker. First elected to the City Council in November of 2014. Beaumont Mayor Lloyd White and his wife Marty and their two children moved to Beaumont in 2007. Mayor White has served on the Beaumont Unified School District's Budget Review Committee, Technology Planning Committee, School Site Council, and PTA Executive Board. In addition to involvement with Beaumont's schools, he is active in Beaumont Cup Scouts and the Cass Area Stingers. Since 1997, Mayor White has worked for ESRI in the Redlands and has a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of California, Los Angeles, um, and a master of business administration degree from the University of Redlands. It is my honor to present to you the Mayor of Beaumont, Lloyd White. Last year's 
city. <laughs> <laughs> it was as he spoke about his elephant in the room. The arrest of Beaumont Center. It wasn't much better in 2015, days after the district attorney's raid on the city hall. And let's not forget 2014, the same week the W. R. Cog judgment was announced. You can see there are no smiles on the <laughs> After watching the two previous mayors deliver their state of the city speeches, while the press and our citizens were focusing on judgments, raids, and set and arrest, I thought we needed to change things up a little. This year, I hope by holding the event later in the year that we just put another fiscal year behind us, there would be more good news to report. And if a scandal broke in the spring, I wouldn't be facing a room full of faces like these, wondering how I was going to address my elephant in the Brooklyn Consider the dress. The City Council has made great progress on many fronts to correct the errors of the past, reduce risk to the city, and repair its finances. The 2018 budget is the first budget in many years to start from a basis of cash solvency, and the city is quickly approaching budget solvency. Beaumont has achieved a basis of fiscal, I'm sorry, fiscal stability in the general fund due to a combination of sound policy making, fiscal management, and reporting. It is no secret that the accounting and reporting practices before 2015 provides us little confidence in the financial foundation of what we are presenting to you today. Our 14-15 budget received a disclaimer opinion from our new auditors because of a lack of confidence in our starting balance. This is unusual, but it is an example of the transparency we have adopted as a council. We learned from our financial experts early on that governments must achieve three levels of solvency to plan for a healthy financial future. Cash solvency is a government that generates sufficient financial resources to pay its current liabilities. Budgetary solvency is, indicates the government's financial ability to maintain current or desired service levels. And service solvency is a government able to sustain over time existing service at levels required by existing and future citizens. As I start to talk about the financials, I'd like to read the fine print for you down so you understand the basis of the data that I'm presenting. 2015 revenue and expenses are audited numbers. 2016 revenues and expenses are end of year unaudited financial statements. We have not yet received our audited uh, financial statements. 2017 figures are estimates for the end of the fiscal year, and 2018 figures are staff proposed budget estimates. The general fund is the primary operating fund for the delivery of municipal services. The city of Beaumont's general fund Revenues are fairly stable and in recent years have been around $30 million a year. You can see in this chart that in fiscal year 2015, expenses were far greater than revenues. This actually resulted from a accounting uh, uh, adjustment. From evaluating the likelihood of an RDA loan being repaid back to the city and determining it could no longer be carried as an asset. So it had been for years it was reported as an expense to write it off. The significant reduction in expenses in 2016 returned the city of Beaumont to a cash solvent position. Budgetary solvency, the ability to maintain services at their current levels dependent upon a minimum level of reserves. The generally accepted position of economists and finance directors is that the municipality's reserves are defined as liquid assets held by a government in order to meet expected future payments and emergency needs. A healthy cash reserve reduces the likelihood that a major unexpected event or a typical recession will cause the city to make drastic cuts to services in order to balance our future budgets. Some reserves are restricted, meaning that they're held for very specific purposes like impact fees or CFP revenues. Some reserves are not unobligated, meaning that they may be used for many municipal or public purposes. These are subject to the discretion of the city council. They usually occur at the end of the year when actual revenues exceed final expenditure. Budgetary solvency. In order to ensure fiscal sus sustainability of budgetary solvency, the following objectives have been established by staff and council as our reserve requirements for the general fund. We want, we want to carry a minimum cash reserve of 15% of our general fund 
for the expenses for the fiscal year. We want to maintain a minimum of cash reserve for our self-insurance program of one and a half million and a minimum of obligated cash reserve of two million created for replacement and major maintenance of vehicles, equipment, and facilities valued at over five thousand dollars. This is a look at our general fund transactions over the last four years. The general fund is projected to end fiscal year 2017 with approximately 6.1 million in cash reserves, meeting our goals for general fund and insurance reserves. The fiscal year 2018 budget projects the city will maintain the recommended levels of general fund and insurance reserves. We are budgeting for 250,000 in the capital reserves all the way through 2018, but this will leave us a reserve deficit of our goal of a total of one and three quarter million in capital reserves. We want to become budget solvency, but we're not there yet. We still have some work to do. I'd like to move on to the sewer fund. Sewer fund is the primary operating fund of the city for the operation and maintenance of the sewer plant, collection system, and related expenses. In 2016, the wastewater system began to operate more efficiently. The savings were realized through the elimination of consultant contracts and bringing operations in home. The sewer fund is cash solvent at this point. Now I want to go through the uh, budgetary solvency of the sewer fund. Through careful fiscal management, the sewer fund has attained a cash reserve equal to 159% of the operating cost in fiscal year 2016. The unaudited 2017 numbers project the city will reach our 50% goal after recording the repayment of an advance payment to our utility bond and an allocation for a capital replacement reserve fund. The 2018 budget maintains the operating reserve while also achieving a targeted 2 million capital replacement reserve contribution. Additionally, the 2018 budget provides the first allocation of cash total. You know this is really exciting. It's giving me all the <laughs> but I gotta get through this. I want you to understand where we are and where we're going. The city is planning for the expansion of the wastewater plant from 4 million gallons to 6 million gallons per day to accommodate anticipated growth. While it's true we have a major task ahead of us to fund the wastewater treatment plant, the sewer plant is also budgetary solvent. In summary, in order to reach budgetary solvency, we need to meet our general fund and sewer fund reserve requirements. We are expected to be short of our capital reserves goal at the end of this fiscal year, but meeting all our other reserve goals. We will have work, we still have work ahead to turn complete budgetary solvency to bond. We adopted a budget this year which projects a $1 million true cash reserves. This is an accomplishment that hasn't been achieved in Beaumont in a number of years. The city of Beaumont is well on our way to achieving budgetary solvency in the very foreseeable future. Now on to service solvency. The government's ability to sustain over time existing services at levels required by the citizens for the future. In 2016, we had to cut expenses to be able to budget for paying our current liabilities. We reduced full-time equipment positions to the city staff down from 162 to 141 full-time positions. The budget that the council adopted this summer for 2018 will bring back the positions we eliminated and create additional positions we need to bring the level of services back to our citizens deserve. We must reach budgetary solvency before we can plan the sustainability required to reach service solvency, but we are putting the city in the best position to move forward. These are a number of the service enhancements. These are all the additional positions that we're adding from 2018. The advance we made this year has enabled us to plan for additional staff positions. Approving a budget for these additional service enhancements is one of the many positive highlights of this year. I'm personally most proud to be able to add three additional patrol officers, a deputy chief, and I'm equally proud to authorize a first, for, I'm equally proud that the council authorized a first for Beaumont, at least in recent history, and that's a new full service street maintenance department. We're going to fix the streets in Beaumont. Now we'd like to move on to the Beaumont market. The city of Beaumont is dedicated to providing each and every new business 
access to the Beaumont Financial Development Team. Together, we cohesively work with businesses, development, and site selected communities to provide quality service and expedite project time to market. I just realized my problem. <laughs> Made possible through strong relationships within the community and the experienced Beaumont staff, partners will have a successful expansion or relocation experience. Beaumont offers incentives that are competitive with other similarly sized areas. These incentives are flexible, and they apply to many different industry sectors and activities. Beaumont facilitates a wide array of expansion and relocation incentives through the state, local, and government agencies. Our staff has established working relationships with the appropriate professionals throughout the Southern California. This is where it gets exciting. <laughs> it's no secret to anyone about Beaumont's rapid growth since 2000, but another important factor that will attract businesses and jobs Beaumont needs is a highly educated workforce. Along with the rapid growth of the population, the data is telling us we have been able to attract a much higher educated workforce. The percentage of workers with less than a high school education has decreased, while the percentage of those with a college degree has grown by 20 points from 14 to 34 percent. This is a chart of our sales tax history over the last four years. It reveals a quarterly cyclical pattern and it reveals what appears to be two anomalies in the first quarter data of this year. And last, the first, I'm sorry, first quarter data of this year and last that we need to understand and be prepared to adjust our budget accordingly. In Q1 of 2016, there's a significant increase in sales tax revenue, which on its face looks good. The increase appears to carry through the entire year of 2016, where you can see the other quarters are higher than the first two years. However, in the first quarter of this year, sales tax revenues appear to decline at a faster rate than in the first quarters of previous years, and is lower than the past two years' first quarters. What this means is that we need to be careful and need to watch what and, and plan for what may or may not happen. The majority of economists recognize that economic recessions occur on average every seven to eight years. We are two or three years overdue. Keeping an eye on our sales tax revenue helps us to better plan our reserves and adjust our spending to weather the next recession. For economic development, we had a big um, announcement this year, Rob Wolverine, Footwear's Distribution Center to Beaumont. It's a good example of the type of future opportunities for Beaumont's industrial development along Highway 60. The Pass Area's immediate market area population exceeds 140,000, and with strong growth projected to occur for several more decades, Beaumont will remain a highly desirable location for new investments. Our own Beaumont Chamber of Commerce is building a better Beaumont one business at a time by averaging five to six new members a month since the beginning of 2017. Currently, our chamber is 310 members strong, and we look forward to working with Chamber Manager Betty Rader and Marketing Manager Dave McMahon, and I know they've been up here before, but I'd like to give them another round of applause. Residential single-family home starts are also showing significant gains off the lows of the recession in 2011. It's no secret Beaumont is clearly still a one-industry town. Net values for industrial and commercial industries in Beaumont remained relatively stable during the recession, years between 28 and 2012 showing very modest growth since. The 28 recession reduced net value for residential uh, the 28 recession reduced net value for residential from 2008 to 2012 by more than 700 million. We lost 700 million dollars in net value because of the 2008 recession. 25 percent of total net value um, of the 2.8 billion in 2008. Residential net value has since recovered by growing nearly one and a half billion dollars since 2012. 2018 projected net value in the residential industry will near three and a half billion, an amazing 75% gain over the low of 30 dollars a year. This is hard work. 
This chart is showing the residential single family home permits or our new home starts. Showing a significant gain off the lows of the recession in 2011. This begs the question how much of the net value increases in the residential can be attributed to new home sales and how much is it recovering existing home sales. If we combine the previous two charts, it is hard to determine without more advanced analysis what's really driving net value growth. But I believe if you look at the first few years of the recovery, it's clear to me that rising home values will bring up the net value. And in the last few years, it's a little less clear. But we're going to be following this and watching this. Two other important popular indicators like to compare to determine the health of the residential industry are average sales prices and median sales prices. This slide shows in Beaumont, with the exception of just two quarters over the last three and a half years, average and median home prices have been almost identical. This pattern suggests a reasonably priced market with few outliers. Financial stability. The fiscal year 2018 is the first year of Beaumont's new era, and our budgets represent the first steps towards creating a community that is capable of realizing its full potential. We now find ourselves in a financially stable position after many years of financial stress. In Beaumont's case, stability comes not only from sound management principles and financial practices, but from the resolutions obtained in a variety of settlements. There are two key partnerships in the future of Beaumont that, are, that were at risk when, when we took office. Resolution of major legal challenges negotiated this year between the city and our key partners, WR Cog and Part E have greatly improved Beaumont's financial future since the last state of the city in March. WR Cog, in late March, we reached a settlement agreement with the Western Riverside Council of Governments concerning the $60 million lawsuit which threatened the financial future of the city. The settlement provides the city the breathing room we need to move forward. The annual increase in local transportation funding the city will begin receiving as a result of this agreement enabled Beaumont to add the street maintenance department I talked about earlier and implement a pavement management program. By working with neighboring cities and WRCOP, we'll be able to begin addressing major regional transportation projects, which I'll address in a few minutes. Part D settlement. Part D homes in the city operated to resolve an outstanding claim which resulted from the actions of the prior administration and council. The settlement was the right choice for Beaumont who has been reached a fraction of the substantial outstanding claims and leverages, unspent bond proceeds, to which Part E was already legally entitled. Our community is now in an improved position to achieve fiscal sustainability in the future. This slide will have a guess. As most of you probably know, the uh, SEC investigation and settlements concluded yesterday. According to the allegations made by the SEC, which the city is not going to either admit or deny, uh, the following items happen. I'm really not allowed to speak too much on this subject. But the city did fully co cooperate with the SEC staff. The investigation resolved with no financial sanctions. The city has agreed to important compliance undertakings related to municipal securities disclosures, accounting for bond proceeds, and record keeping. So Beaumont is fiscally sound. Reserves are only one part of Beaumont's recent financial challenges. The resolution of legal challenges, Melrose, CFD tax relief, multi-year forecasting, and long-term capital improvement plan. None of those issues have been discussed in the city in the, more than two years ago. These are all new to what we're doing here. On August 1st, the Beaumont City Council approved a $2.4 million annual reduction in CFD Melrose to our tax code. How many times do you hear of a government lowering property tax? We did this through a combination of PAYGO reductions and bond refinancing for all the eligible improvement areas. This affected over 7,000 homes in Beaumont. So over 7,000 homes in Beaumont are receiving lower property taxes back in this year. 
This council is committed to an annual review of all remaining areas for eligibility for the completed planned infrastructure, callability of existing bonds, and the expected benefit to homeowners from interest rate differential are all taken into consideration for determining future areas for refinancing. <coughs> There's a slide here that's not up there. I'll address it later if we get to it. So here's our five-year capital improvement plan. We are forming a blue ribbon committee to provide recommendations for city council for these, these projects as well as others. Yeah, with the new addition of money from WR Cog and Comp, um, we're in a position that we can start a, a pavement management program. And the first areas that we're going to get are helping Todd, what are they? critical that the city develop a pavement management strategy to protect this investment. The first step is to develop a multi-year maintenance program has been taken. Every city maintained lane mile has been professionally evaluated and rated. And overall, the city's road rates are structurally sound. As the map indicates, the greatest needs is in the central city. It is estimated that an investment of 2.3 million over, the net over each year over the next five years is required to maintain the street network at its current level. Beaumont will complete major road improvement projects this year to Oak Valley Parkway, Cherry Avenue, 8th Street, and Xenia Avenue. It's been many years since we've completed such significant road reconstruction projects. Here it is. After, after we recognized where we were financially, we put together a checklist of all the things that we needed to accomplish to get back to sustainability. And as what happened last yesterday was the final piece that we needed to complete our path to sustainability. We now have eliminated the general fund deficit. We've settled the WR clock judgment. We've settled the party claim. We've settled with Beaumont Cherry Valley Regional Park District. We've done a fund reconciliation and refinance for tax savings, the CFP program. The AB 1600 report's been completed. The State Controller's Office report, we were notified that we were had internal control deficiencies in 70 out of 74 areas. We've addressed all of those. We still have about 5% still to go. The SEC investigation has been resolved, and our fiscal sustainability has been completed. This is 1950s street scene of Grace and Fifth Street. And you can see the first bank of Oma. This is what it looks like now. I just realized why I'm having so many problems. Todd, Mark, Todd Parton, my city manager, and Ashley Starr, Help me put this whole project together. We had a bet on how long it would take me to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a 12 pack of year 24. 
Ashley had 30 minutes or less. Todd had anything above 30 minutes. He was estimating in an hour, 45 minutes or an hour. <laughs> and it's just interesting that he's the one that comes up and provides me with the duck. <laughs> I knew I should not have let this out of my hands. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the current and upcoming projects. And I hope we have a little special surprise. So this is the uh, Procaro Interchange State Route 60. Today, the city has spent approximately $13 million for redesigning environmental clearance and right-of-way certification for the interchange, and will spend another $2 million to complete the design for Phase 2 of the project. Construction of Phase 1 improvements is expected to cost $21.5 million. We've secured $13 million in project funding through highway grants, and our private landowners have immediately adjacent to the project have agreed to contribute to the remaining $8.5 million needed to complete the construction. The City Council gave instruction to our staff beginning of this year that our taxpayers had already put $13 million into this project and we were not going to allow any more taxpayer money to go on the project and we were going to complete it. The landowners were, were going to fill in the gap and they'd come up and they're working on filling in the gap. This is what the uh, completed Phase 1 and Phase 2 So that will be the completed phase one and two of the project. Actually, it's the full completed project, phase three as well, which is um, considerably down the road in the future. The next interchange that we're, we're um, going to be addressing is the Oak Valley Interchange. Improvements to the Oak Valley Interchange are a collaborative effort with Western Riverside Council Government and would not be possible without the settlement we had with WR Cotton. The interchange project is essential to reducing traffic volume for residents, primarily in the western portion of the city. This project complements Petrero Boulevard interchange as Oak Valley Parkway will serve as an alternative route to access Highway 60 of Petrero Boulevard. In addition to the interchange, repaving project will begin soon on Zena Avenue between 6th and 8th Street and Oak Valley between Cherry Avenue and South of I-10. the expected completed Oak Valley Interchange. Pennsylvania, this is the project that we're closest to starting on. On July 28th, the Beaumont City Council approved and issued a request for proposal soliciting bids for the design of a new interchange, including the grade separation at the railroad crossing. This project has been broken into three phases, widening the signals, which we hope to complete by the end of fiscal year 18-19. The ramps, phase two, is fiscal year 18-19. Construction of a grade separation will take much longer. That took a number of years, and um, I'm not sure how many years that was for your grade separation. Parts over there are from the sun. <laughs> this project will alleviate traffic on Highland Springs and Beaumont Avenue. negotiations are underway for conceptual design of streetscape and plaza concept. Streetscapes are for 6th Street, California to Palm, and Beaumont Avenue from I-10 I to 8th Street. So we're in the design phase, and we've, we've hired some um, consultants to make some recommendations. Redevelopment concepts for the Civic Center, City Hall, Plaza Campus will assess the existing structures the redevelopment of the open spaces for cultural, recreational, and civic uses. The additional positions that we've added in, in this year has created a space uh, problem at City Hall. And so we're trying to address that on the short term, but we're looking at a concept for a civic center campus on the long term. We started this year working on our general plan. At the beginning of the presentation, I talked about all the support we've gotten from our community. We created three, two committees, a finance audit committee, an economic development committee, 
we're in the middle of our two-year plan to update our general plan. And I wanted to make sure that we make mention of all the folks that are on these different uh, committees. I know on the general plan I saw Wayne Burke here today, I saw uh, Susie Lara's here, and uh, a number of Steve Melman, Julio Martinez, of course, a number of other members. We wanted to make sure that we make recognition for the volunteers in our community. These are the two committees that we talked about. Again, many of these people are here today, um, and we're moving forward with a, both an economic development and finance audit committee. These volunteers contribute hundreds of hours and provide direction to the city council regarding our finances and development. Uh, most recently, the Economic Development Committee produced a spot analysis that will assist us in developing our economic strategic plan. These are the goals that City Council has set out for our staff to address. Public safety, we want to ensure that Beaumont maintains its reputation as a safe community and evolves to meet the needs of Beaumont's residential and commercial growth. Quality of life, we want to enhance and maintain Beaumont's natural beauty and offer parks and recreation services that address the needs of every citizen. We want to create an economically balanced community to achieve fiscal sustainability. We want to provide core services to the community that ensure Beaumont remains a desirable place to live, work, and play. For a sustainable community, we want to ensure that the city resources are maximized and deployed in a manner that meets Beaumont's long-term needs. And finally, intergovernmental, interagency relationships. We want to work with our local agencies and our neighbors to achieve common goals and leverage our area's resources. At this point, I'd like to bring up my fellow council members and our city manager, Todd Parker. Taking Beaumont into the future is going to take all of us working together. We have a new team with the help and motivation to continue rebuilding our city and putting the past behind us. There were many times where as new council members we needed to put our differences aside in order to overcome enormous challenges together. We need our entire community to put the past behind us and work together for the common good of our community. At a joint session of Congress in 1982, there's a quote by Ronald Reagan from his State of the Union address in front of a joint session of Congress in which he sums up best what I've been trying to convey to you today. Together we have made a new beginning, but we've only begun. And I want to thank everyone up here and let you know that we have the team in place to move forward. And thank you for coming today.